Prince of Persia is a 2D platform game with some really great cinematics for its generation and was a game that could be found on just about every platform around in the 80s and 90s. But the version I owned was the Super NES version, which was released by Konami in 1992. But before I start to talk about this great game, I feel it is important to first talk about the game's designer, Jordan Meshner. This guy was an absolute genius in the world of computer games, and he set the standard for animation and storytelling in video games long before anyone else. Let's go back in time to the year 1985. <laughs> now doesn't that sound familiar? What you are looking at here is Karateka, or Karateka, depending on how you choose to pronounce it. Anyway, Karateka was a sideways scrolling fighter with absolutely incredible levels of animation for the time, and also featured great use of music to set the tone for the action and scene, and adopted these really novel cutscenes. And even without a single word being spoken, or story cropping up on the screen, you could tell exactly what was going on in the scene. And this was due to the animation and music. Jordan Mechner admitted himself he was no graphic artist, but he wanted to create a game that would tell a story and enthrall the player just as much as it would excite them to play it. To achieve this high standard of visual, Jordan decided to use rotoscoping to animate his sprites in Karateka. He would film his father climbing up onto a car, running in the garden, as well as kicking and punching, and use this as the basis for the animation of the main sprite, and also roped his sister along as well for some of the other animations. Rotoscoping is an incredibly labour-intensive process to carry out, as each third frame of film has to be traced individually, pixel by pixel, and this creates about 6 frames per second of animation. The entire process took about 6 months to complete, but the end result was a game that looked and sounded miles ahead of its time, and at the time when I had it, I always used it as a showpiece game to my mates, who did not have a home computer at the time. But unfortunately, the joystick controls let the game down, and as such, it was a game that I often looked at, but didn't play much. But it was also a game that stuck in my mind for years. Of course, now I realise that it is actually far easier to play it with a keyboard, but when I was a nine-year-old boy, I didn't much like using the keyboard for games. That was a preserve for ZX Spectrum owners.
Fast forward now to 1989. And in those days, the Amiga and Atari ST were considered the top of the home computing pile. The PC in the UK at least was not considered a viable option as a games machine, mainly due to the price of the machine. Most were still around the £3,000 mark, but also due to a lack of games. But a few people I knew had one, or had access to one, through their parents at least. One school buddy of mine had a dad who worked in IBM in Greenock, and his old man was able to borrow a desktop from work, complete with full colour monitor, which was a rarity for staff to get. And when my buddy showed it to me, I immediately asked, Has it got any games for it? And it did. One was Leisure Suit Larry, and the other was Prince of Persia. Now, on a different side note here, as more and more people got IBM desktops at home, it soon became clear that all of them had Leisure Suit Larry and Prince of Persia on them. I can't imagine what the conversations around the water coolers and IBM must have been like. Anyway, when he fired up Prince of Persia, I spotted the name Jordan Mechner and knew what to expect. And from the very off, you could see a lot of similarities between this and Karateka. The triangles for the life bar, the rotoscoping animation, and the cinematic approach to storytelling. This time around, the rotoscoping was improved, and the process was every bit as painful that the 16-bit machines of the day were capable of handling more frames of animation, and this smoothed everything out. As you can see here, the film footage that was traced resulted in some incredibly fluid pixel animation. Fighting animation was based more on a sort of hybrid between fencing and the Errol Flynn sword buckling action as seen in the likes of The Adventures of Robin Hood movie from 1938. This game was amazing, but I have to say, while it was fun to play, it did lack a lot of atmosphere. There is very little sound, and what sound it is there sounds artificial or dull. But it was a great game to play for sure. Fast forward now to 1992, and by this time, Prince of Persia was released on just about everything. And while I did have fond memories of the PC version, I have to say, it wasn't a game I was intentionally going to go and purchase. But on my 16th birthday, I ended up getting about 40 quid through various cards and gifts. And so, I wanted to head up to Glasgow to see if I could purchase a game for my Super Famicom. Video Exchange and the Argyle Arcade had a new sealed US version of Prince of Persia. The problem was it was £50 and I only had 40 But the guy there explained to me he had a Japanese version of the game out on rental and it was due back today. And he would sell me that for 40 quid. So I hung around for hours and eventually the store guy got fed up with me hanging about and offered me the US version for £40. But I had to promise to come back in the following week with the other tenor. Which of course, I didn't do. So when I finally got home and played the game, I have to say, this was the best version of Prince of Persia around. The eagle-eyed viewers may have noticed that there is a two hour time limit, 
and the original had a 60 minute time limit. The extra hour was not to make the game easier, it was there because this version had 20 levels instead of the 12 on the PC version. The other thing that is obvious is this game has music through the entire game, which was very welcome as it does add some much needed atmosphere to the proceedings. The visuals are top notch. Although the rotoscoping was not used, the prints is animated to look much like every other version out there and it actually looks very good. The fighting, the running, the climbing, the jumping, everything looks so nice. And speaking of jumping, due to the way the animation works, your jumps need to be timed. The basic rule of thumb is that it takes three tiles to do a running jump. So when you want to jump from a ledge running, you need to press the jump button three tiles in advance. This was the way it was in all versions of the game. And in my day, it was just something you accepted. It was just part of the game. Today, it's called lag. Go figure. The backgrounds change up every three levels or so, from the dungeons to the palace interior and even into hell, it seems. But this is a welcome change, as it helps break up the look of the game and also spurs the player on, as it lets you know you are getting closer to your destination and the final confrontation with Jafar. Of course, we must have a look at the cinematics as well. And yes, they are all in there. The mirror cinematic, Jafar breaking the platform, the confrontation with your mirror, and the princess sending the mouse to help. And all of them look resplendent in the Super NES colour palette. Oh, and you get this nice extra little cinematic of the princess appearing in the moonlight just before the final battle with Jafar. A nice little touch indeed. The opening cinematic on the Super NES is very good as well. It does clearly narrate the story to the player and shows the player just how evil Jafar can be. But there are some differences between the regions. The Japanese version of the game shows the prince being beaten and tortured in the dungeons before being dragged away. In the versions for the West, this is missing. But personally, I prefer the West version. The music fits better with the cinematic in the West. The music changes when Jafar reveals the timer. But in the Japanese version, it looks a little off. Just see for yourself and let me know in the comments which one you prefer. The sound is really good in this game. The music, as I have mentioned, is a welcome addition 
and is really cool as well. Some of the tunes are really memorable and all of them suit the theme and feel of the game. The sound effects too are of a high standard, with the sword clashes sounding very metallic, but the sword swipe is questionable and the jump sound does sound like he's ripped his pants or something. The gameplay is outstanding. The extra levels do not actually add too much to the game. Most of them are quite small, but it was nice that they were added. To pay £40 for a game that would be done in an hour would be a hard sell, really. And the game does come with a password option, so you don't have to play it through in one sitting. These days, all of the level codes are available online and are easily found. To look at it now, Prince of Persia looks like a game where you move to the other side of the screen very quickly and then stop, as this is how most people play it. But there is a reason for this style of play. You see, if you just run head first into the next screen, you can easily run off a ledge or into a trap of some sort and die. So this approach is a more cautious approach to use. The day I got this game, I played it for a good while. Some video game mates had come over, and so we each had a shot, but this was not their cup of tea. You see, there are two types of platform games from this era. Cutesy platformers like Sonic and Mario, and serious platformers like Prince of Persia and Another World. I have always preferred the serious kind and these mates preferred the cutesy kind. But they did concede it was a good game. Later on that night, my school weaver buddies turned up and they had been drinking. So they wanted me to join them in a swally to celebrate my 16th birthday. I declined. It was cold and I just wanted to put my feet up against my radiator and play Prince of Persia. It was just as well I didn't join them, as after they left mine, they ended up lobbing an empty beer bottle through a window of someone's house. And this someone was a paper customer of mine. They did get caught and dealt with, as I found out the next day when I went to collect my paper money. But it just shows you the impact decisions have on your life. And these are the strange memories I seem to have stored that get unlocked when playing old video games. I did eventually go on to beat Jafar in the game, and I have to say, Prince of Persia was one of the finest games I ever owned or played on the Super Nintendo. It doesn't really have much replay value, and so once I finished it, I never played it again, until I had a go for this video. And I have to say, it is still an awesome game. And that was my quite abstract look back at Prince of Persia on the Super Nintendo. If you like this video, then please do give me a sub and a thumbs up, or maybe even a comment or two below about your memories of Prince of Persia on any format. That's all from me folks, thanks for watching.